What does it mean to plead the blood and is it biblical? Coming from a Pentecostal and charismatic background, I would often hear, I plead the blood. And you would hear it oftentimes when certain situations arise or when someone wants something, they would make a statement such as, I plead the blood. Sometimes in dire situations, something is happening and you want God to deliver you or a certain person from that. I plead the blood over that. Or uh, when someone wants something, I plead the blood over my finance. I plead the blood over my health. I plead the blood over my marriage. Things that might be genuinely uh, appropriate to pray for, we add this term, I plead the blood, as though it is something important to make sure that this prayer, this request gets done. But is that biblical? Well, let's just start off by saying this. No, it's not. The term, the phrase, or anyone else in the Bible doing so, that's not found anywhere in Scripture. So here's what, I, here's what we're going to do today. We're going to plead the blood of Jesus today over a lot of things. Uh, we'll get Psalm 91 equipped, plead the blood of Jesus. I, I think today needs to be a day where we all uh, join together and releasing the power of God, just like I just released the blessings of God over your life, that we're going to do a lot of confessing today and uh, just assist you in releasing the power and the anointing of God over situations in your life. So you hear a lot of people who are of the word of faith who will say that I plead the blood as though it is adding power to what it is that you want. Well, the Bible tells us this, and y'all recall in Matthew 6, he says that one, don't worry about anything, but in but what he leads to, to verse 33, he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness, and then these things shall be added. Now, does that mean that we're going to get everything that we want? Well, we know better than that. As a matter of fact, we see in the Bible where there were great men of God, such as Paul, who needed something. Recall, he had this issue of thorn in his flesh, and the Bible declares that he did not get it removed. As a matter of fact, the Bible says, or Paul tells us, that it was given to him to humble him. And so just because you plead the blood or just because you pray, even if it is a righteous and a well-deserving prayer, there's nothing uh, sinful or diabolical or even selfish about the prayer, that doesn't necessarily mean that it will come to pass. I thank you for the blood of Jesus being applied to the doorpost of my life. I declare that no evil will come near my dwelling place, nor will any plague come near my tent, my house. Nothing shall by any means harm me, hurt me, or injure me. I plead the blood of Jesus. Decreeing and declaring is not up to us. And then even if you do so and try to apply to something that is, again, well-meaning, you want to be uh, in good health and you want protection, that still isn't necessarily biblical. Notice how he says he wants to apply the blood to his doorpost again. When we look at the blood, and we need to keep in mind what the blood is for, he is obviously, he's applying it incorrectly, and he's applying it for gain. Let's look and see what the word of the Lord says. As a matter of fact, one passage that comes up often is in Revelation speaking about the blood and our testimony. Starting in verse 10, in the middle of verse 10 of chapter 12, he says, now the salvation and the power and the kingdom of God and the authority of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren has been thrown down. He who accuses them before our God day and night, and they overcame him because of the blood of the lamb and because of the word of their testimony. And they did not love their life even when faced with death. It's important to keep in mind what's being spoken about here. This is not about getting anything um, such as a car, a house, finances, health, wealth, none of those things, none of these things that have to do with worldly prosperity. But notice the key word that's used in the middle of verse 10 is salvation. What is the point of the blood? Well, the blood is clearly given as a payment for our debt that's owed to God. As a matter of fact, Paul says, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God and are justified by his grace as a gift through the redemption. That's his payment, this word here, aplutrosis, the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood. The word propitiation is a payment for sin, and the payment of sin was his blood. To receive faith, this was to show God's righteousness because of his divine forbearance. He has passed over former sins. And so even when Creflo Dollar talks about putting the, the blood on the doorpost, hearkening back to 
the Exodus, this is again him passing over sins. And so the blood is a payment for a sin debt. And so when we plead the blood, the point and purpose of the blood is to pay for us. Yes, we're washed by it, but it's not a, mat, a set of magical words to give us what we want. It's not hocus pocus or open sesame. These are words that people will try to use to almost guarantee or almost even to kind of twist God's arm into giving them what they want. That's not the point and purpose of the blood. Oh, by the way, if you are in need of something, the Bible tells us a couple of things. One, get close to him. Draw close to him. Let him take care of the things that we need and get rid of the things that we don't need. Let him grow and develop us. But we're also told that we are going to suffer persecution if we are in Christ. And so we're not going to have the easiest of life because we are Christians, at least not here. We will when we get to our final destination, which is not of this world. And so just be just be careful, guys. Now, am I saying if a person who pleads the blood that they are in gross sin? No, but I do want you to not be ignorant or to succumb to some things that may have been taught that just weren't necessarily biblically founded. We don't need to make up something or to misunderstand something to get God's blessing. Whatever God is going to give us, as long as we're faithful, as long as we're in him, which I pray that you are, I pray that you place your faith in him and that you're walking in him. If that's the case, keep doing what you're doing. Grow closer to him. Don't desire the things of the world. He already knows what you have need of before you even ask. And so rather than you pleading the blood over your situation, just know that the blood has already been put over you for your salvation and let God do the rest. Let him see your faithful walk and then let him deliver you how he sees fit. Amen.